morning, YouTube. It's time to get out the day's work. Feeding the chicks and the turkeys. Taking care of the chickens in the background. Giving them some sourdough starter. They totally love my sourdough starter. What else are we going to do today? We're going to cut up some logs, make them one by sixes for the garden. Already took the seedlings out of the seed room and put them on a table outside, starting to harden them off because I plan on having the garden done in less than a week. Yeah, maybe one or two logs. And then I'm going to burn the last two and a half feet of all the four by fours that I made out of pine. That's the goal for the day. <laughs> Let's get her done. All right, everybody up, ready, set, and we're moving, you guys in the back there, let's get up, come on, let's go, yeah, that wall that's pushing on you, that means walk, come on, can we walk, and we are walking, <laughs> Put one foot in front of the other, and soon you'll be walking out of your own poop. You, in the back, let's go. Just too far. One, uh, go. Uh, ah, perfect. Before I move on to food and water, you were watching me do that when I was moving them constantly watching the birds, especially the meat birds. Those guys will loiter in the back the whole time. So you're always watching to see if anybody gets suddenly shorter because now their leg is sticking out the back. Not cool. Pull forward slowly, little bumps on the body, get them to move because they're all hanging out, laying around being sloths. Never use a tractor to pull the chickens. Are you guys hungry? You're not? Pro tip, move chickens first, then feed, so you're not walking in all their poop. Whoever it is that's in the house will be happier that you're not traipsing in chicken manure. Two pounds, five ounces, four of them. It would be gone by about one. You guys remember all those little wires I left poking out to deter predators? <laughs> They're doing a great job on me. I changed the orientation of the feeders from this way to this way to accommodate the slope better and to give easier access to the uh, waters. It just seemed like a smarter thing to do. I also raised them up a smidge. But you can see that even here, first thing in the morning, some of the chickens aren't eating. 
And it's not because they figured out that if they get fat, I'm going to eat them. Even if they're skinny, I'm eating them. It's because they're already full. They ate food this morning. They chewed up all the grass. Let's go look at what they did to the grass behind this tractor. Ate the stuff they liked, apparently. Left everything else. Well manured, though. By the end of the year, this should be nice and tall with grass that hopefully isn't napweed. And then for the turkeys, I tried suspending the water in the middle. This particular waterer, I guess, is not meant to be suspended. It likes to list slightly to the right or to the left. So I've got a couple of pieces of bark underneath it on the corner brace, and it's doing much better. The, my research into the turkeys is that they don't do well with the nipple waterers. When they were in the brooder with the nipple waterers, they just tried to eat the piece of metal right off the top. And didn't get water out of it unless they packed it off of a chicken who was smart enough to get it off so they need a well of water so they're going to get this but if i put that last year if any of you watched my chick log i said i hate this water because it's always full of grime but that's what they do to it these guys i didn't wash that out this morning it's perfectly clean i'm starting to like turkeys a lot you guys are cute too aren't you Yes, you are. Sawmelon. The wife and I were at it. At one log. Let's see, we were 10 to 1? 1, 1.30? No, 1. And we cut 50 1 by 6s. 
one log. We need those one by sixes because the garden fence, when it goes up, will be top dressed and bottom dressed with one by sixes to help the structure of the thing and to keep the netting I'll be using on one side from sagging because it's plastic. But it's very see through, so it's cool. Anyway, I took the uh, plants out this morning from the seed room and they got a day in the sun. The tomatoes back there all decided, here I'll turn the camera around. My tallest tomatoes, which were all the way up to the light, all decided, no, not the sun, and they all flopped. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set up a little station here in the shade, and um, I'm going to plant them all in gallon pots and bury them up to their neck. Let's get set up for that. I swear I watered this tomato this morning. <laughs> but this whole tray ended up dry. This is a uh, San Marzano tomato. It's showing signs of, yeah, it's upset because it dried out. So you can see that it was root bound. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna put it down here inside this one gallon pot. I'm gonna snip off all these lower branches And even though we're going to plant these in the ground, hopefully in a week, I'm going to replant them. And I'm going to bury it up to its neck. Now you can bury anybody that's related to a tomato two-thirds up. So when you transplant it into the garden, I'll do it again. So two-thirds of the plant is going to be in the ground. Now when, it, when I'm doing it in the garden, I'll, I'll do it horizontally and then take their top and point it towards the sky. But, you know, in, in a one-gallon pot, I, I don't have a lot of choices. Some of the tomatoes that I've already transplanted, they're down there, had uh, bendy stems, so I could actually curl most of their stock up inside of the pot. But now, this San Marzano cherry is replanted. It's still looking droopy, but tomorrow, I'm thinking it's going to be standing up and proud do this to your tomatoes. And this is the end of our video for the day, so think about homesteading, behave yourselves.